Hey folks, so I know what you're thinking, Dan's opening up the bar and we're not talking about the most recent chapter? The short answer? Yeah, but that's what tomorrow is for. Every single one of you know I loved squeaking the theory right before the bell. But, last time we were chilling at the bar, someone asked me, Dan, what would happen if number six fought Deku? And to be honest, this is a question that's been asked of me so many times and I've just avoided talking about it. But now, I definitely think it's the appropriate time to talk about who would win in a fight between number six and Deku. So let's head inside and grab ourselves a drink. Alright, welcome to the bar. So, usually I don't touch upon the topic of death battles whatsoever, because when it comes to power scaling and mathematics in general, I am not that guy. Believe me, ask anyone they know, you do not take math advice from this guy over here. It's literally why I have a living calculator on my face. And for the past three years, people have subtly asked me the question constantly, Dan, who do you think wins in a fight between Deku and number six? So I'm gonna stop putting it off, and today I'm gonna answer the question. So, meet me over by the wall. I'm gonna pour another shot for the boys over at Plot Armor and I'll see you over there. Alright, so, the tale of the tape. We have the main antagonist of My Hero Academia Vigilantes, number 6. And we have the main protagonist of My Hero Academia, Izuku Midoriya, now known as the hero, Deku. See, when I first thought about this fight, it came down to, okay, at which point in time in their career are we gonna say that these two are gonna bang out? And if I don't compare full power versus full power, there's absolutely zero point to this, so of course we're gonna use these two. But to be quite honest, I don't think this would be an absolute wash like everyone thinks that it would be. And the reason why I say that is Koichi's quirk Slide and Glide provides him with a lot more durability than any of Deku's quirks give him. Out of the seven quirks that Deku has, only one of them acts as a defensive quirk. That's End Smokescreen. He could use that to jam up Number 6's line of sight, but at the same time, Number 6 still has Overclock. And on top of that, he essentially has the same exact quirk as Bakugo. One big explosion, Smokescreen disappears. And the biggest flaw for Deku, I'm telling you, is the fact that he just lacks defense. The reason why Koichi's been able to stay alive as long as he has is because his quirk provides an ultimate defense. He can literally block shots from behind him with his eyes closed. If Deku's opponent relies on precision, he has to up it with speed. If Nagant didn't get the Shonen Talk of Doom, I was convinced that Deku was going to be captured. So we would say that instead of having six individual quirks, number six has six individual forms. Each one specializes in a different type of combat. And what's crazy is the first thing that I would think of is collateral damage, because I could tell you right now, there would be more collateral damage with number six versus Deku than there would be with number six versus Koichi. Deku would have to find ways to defend against number six's attacks. Number six can stay airborne for the most part. We haven't seen if Deku can maintain flight for an extended period of time. We've seen that float enables him to float for a substantial amount of time, but it doesn't by any means give him the ability to soar through the air for a substantial amount of time. If anything, Fa Jin helps him soar over great heights very quickly. So when it comes to fighting number six, he's going to be throwing explosive punches, he's going to evolve into a monster, and the inevitable conclusion will be can Deku survive the onslaught of number six before number six would burn out or would number six find a way to get defeated before it burning out because the one thing that we can say about Koichi is that we have not seen this guy throw a punch or a kick against number six throughout this entire fight imagine with his thrusters fully on Koichi actually punching or kicking somebody that is Deku the minute that number six would have evolved into his second form Deku would have gone in for the offensive really quick this monster form of number six is made to chase somebody down. It is 100% not meant to take down a melee fighter. So if a full powered Deku moved in on this version of number six, the fight would be absolutely over. I see it already. Deku fires off a bunch of air force shots, uses black whip to spring off and then comes in and kicks him in the face with a Manchester smash. I don't want to say then it's a wrap because then right after that, number six becomes a giant flaming ball of plasma. And honestly, that's when the endurance match fully begins. We've seen that when in this form, number six is faster than Koichi, which means that considering number six was already one of 
of the fastest characters in My Hero Academia that probably puts him either on par or just right below Deku in terms of speed. As for when it comes to dodging number 6's attacks, Deku isn't going to be able to take a direct hit no matter what. When it comes to that type of defense, Deku lacks that severely. The only durability that Deku has is the durability that One For All provides to him. And in this particular form, I got a feeling that physical attacks would probably hurt you more than they would hurt him. And the one thing that we can also say that Deku has over Koichi is the fact that Deku is extremely creative when it comes to creating new moves on the fly. Deku would use his black whip to grab the floater bombs that number 6 planted behind him to fling right back at his target. To be quite honest, the key to beating number 6 in this particular form is black whip. It would be the only way for Deku to actually grab number 6 and do some damage to him. Now as for number 6's final form when he becomes a giant kaiju labeled destruction style, I think this is actually when the fight reaches its easiest for Deku because the one thing that he likes is when his targets are big. When something is big, Deku can try to smash it. That's what he does. He smashes huge obstacles that stand in front of him. And the thing is, this would be number 6's last stand in the scope of a fight with Deku. And the reason why I'm saying that is because that's the entire scope of number 6's fighting profile. He doesn't not use this form, but this form is what gets him beat against Deku. In the general landscape of My Hero Academia, you don't want to be a 70 foot monster. Those villains are the ones that get taken down over the course of 12 chapters by like 30 different people. And we've kind of seen with overall what happens when you turn into a giant monster and face Deku. So it probably would not go well. And I think with everything that we know about both characters, the answer to this question is pretty much a slam dunk. Deku wins. And I know, yeah, some of you are like, okay, yeah, shit, we knew this, close the video, we're done here. But that's the thing. That's not just it. Deku wins the fight. I get it. And honestly, he kind of wins by the skin of his teeth because it isn't until the most recent chapters that Deku has this exponential power growth. One of my biggest grievances is that they've said that he's gone around taking out villains left and right. We've never seen him do it. You know, it's that old literary instance of show, don't tell. We've seen Deku take out the likes of Lady Nagant and my Hero Academia's version of Kisame, but we didn't even see that fight. And then when I was thinking about the winner of this fight, that was actually where I was getting slipped up. Because to be quite honest, during the Vigilante arc, he really doesn't do much. He takes out the same bad guy he took out three years ago, and then he takes out Lady Nagant by telling her the truth. So in a way, Horikoshi has almost taken every single one of us as readers and made us the civilians living in the My Hero Academia universe, because we haven't seen what Deku does, we only hear about what he does. And narratively at the time, it was cool being in the dark like the kids at Class 1A because it felt like at the time that Deku was freezing us, the reader, out as well. But the real fork in it was that fight against Lady Nagant. The sheer destructiveness of Lady Nagant's quirk was on par with that of Number 6's like fourth form. And the fact that Deku was able to accelerate past that point lets me know that there's no way that number 6 would be able to keep up with Deku at an extended period of time. That means that number 6 would eventually go into his 5th and 6th form, and when he goes into his 6th form that is pretty much a guarantee that he will die. So let me know how you feel about this decision and let me know if you are number 6 then and you feel like that he was slighted by this loss. Sorry villain lovers, I gotta stand by my boy Deku on this one and say that he would absolutely manhandle this villain. And if you want me to do more of these versus videos, this one kind of made me think about what would happen in a fight between Koichi and Bakugo. And if you want to see that video, let's try to get this video to like 400 likes. But I'll see y'all tomorrow for a review of the chapter. Cheers.